We are in the fourth week of our current and, in fact, final series of the 2020-2021 season. We've been looking at transitions, transitions and why they're so important. As we've acknowledged in the course of this series, springtime brings a great many transitions, significant transitions like weddings and graduations, on top of all the other transitions, the major transitions that really define our life experience, like births and deaths. This particular season, we are in as a society also seems most definitely to be a time of transition when it comes to the COVID crisis, as evidenced by our sanctuary today. So with all this transitioning going on, it seems to us an opportune time, a perfect time, really, to look at the experience itself and God's perspective on it. God works through our lives, and that includes through our transitions. They're a part of his marvelous, mysterious design for our lives. We began our discussion of transitions by discussing the anatomy or the phases of a transition. And we said there are three. The first phase of a transition is actually an ending. Before you can move on to something new, one thing, some things, maybe many things must end. Every transition begins with an ending. The second phase of a transition is the in-between time, in between the ending and what's next. And of course, the third phase of a transition is precisely what's next. It's the new beginning. Next week, we'll be wrapping up this series, and we'll also be switching over to what we like to call summer format. In our summer format, there's only a brief homily here in the Mass, and then our weekend message comes after Mass and is offered by other members of our staff. This gives me a break from preaching and you a break from me. But more importantly, it allows us to continue to offer message series uninterrupted throughout the summertime while giving some of our other staff the chance to speak here in big church without, I might add, violating any liturgical norms, which I know you're concerned about. <laughs> this summer, we'll be hearing from Tom, my associate, Daniel, our Next Generation Director, and Brian, our Director of Production and Worship. And here are two promises that I can make up front. They are all excellent speakers, and they're already working hard on their messages, so you won't want to miss them. Second promise, the mass and message together will not, repeat, will not be any longer than our standard 60-minute service time, promise. Well, throughout the last weeks of this series, we've been looking at transitions in terms of major transitions, life-defining transitions, the ones that mark the significant stages of our life or even change our life. Today, we want to look at the flip side of that, how, are, how to carry on this principle of transitions in the ryth rhythms of our daily life when it comes to minor transitions. Healthy people live life with a sense of rhythm. And by that, I mean they build routines and habits into their day, their week, their year that set them up for success when it comes to their work life or their home life, in their relationships, and most of all, in their personal care for the health of their heart. On the other hand, the information-saturated, instant gratification culture we live in works against us. Technology and the resulting assault on our attention has robbed us of ordinary transition spaces and opportunities that used to be built into life, that used to be a given, that we took for granted, that are gone. 
Efficiency matters, I'm all about it, but it's not the most important value in life. When we only live our lives to go as far as we can go, as fast as we can go to get as much done as possible, as efficiently as possible, we might inadvertently be acting unkindly to ourselves, to our soul. Besides, God is often in the delay. It's true. He can be. In fact, sometimes the delay, the disappointment is actually the loving hand of God slowing us down. So, why not just go ahead and give Him some space? That's what today's message is all about. You know, the experience of the past year, as difficult and unwelcome as it has been, was also a bit of a respite, wasn't it, from our nonstop lifestyles. As we emerge from COVID, we might do well to examine our previous approach and experience and maybe do some things differently. So allow me to briefly offer some simple practices and habits on how to bring transition into the rhythm of your day-to-day living. And before I share these very simple, practical habits with you, let me make a confession. I am not good at this. I'm not. I'm really bad at this. Some of you are probably better at this than I am. So let me just acknowledge that most all of what I'm saying today applies, first of all, to me. But hey, you know what they say. If you preach to yourself you'll never run out of things to preach about. So, a few suggestions. We talk all the time about a daily quiet time. And this can be any time of day you like, but first thing in the morning often works best for many people. How long should your quiet time be? Makes absolutely no difference whatsoever. If you're not doing anything, Start with six or seven minutes a day. That can be a place to start. And then you can add time over time. And if you don't know what to do or what to say or how to use that time, sign up for our daily devotional. It's called Worship Fully. You can sign up on our website today. We'll send it to you tomorrow morning and every morning, and it's free. But really, you should think of your daily quiet time as a, as a baseline for your prayer. Of course, you can always say a quick prayer before meals. Many of us grew up doing that, but it's not just a custom for kids. It's a great discipline for everyone. And think about this. In the course of the workday or the school day, be deliberate about checking texts or opening emails. Turn to them more as a reward for work accomplished rather than a distraction from work itself. And match this new habit with an even better one. Pause to pray. Instead of pausing to text all the time, pause to pray. Throughout the course of your day, pause to pray. You know, in many European cities and towns, traditionally, church bells rang at specific times of day not just to mark the hours of the day, but to call people to prayer, to remind them to pray. In Catholic countries, this happened three times a day, every day, and everyone, whoever they were, whatever they were doing, would stop and pray. It's called the Angelus, and many people still follow this custom. You can actually download an Angelus app to your phone. I did it. Well, actually, somebody did it for me, but it's done. Also, in your everyday life, be mindful. Be attentive to the times you need to give yourself time. The times you need to give yourself time. There are moments in life where something significant just happened. The funeral of a family friend, a piece of news that hits you hard, a personal win 
that really means something. At least, it really means something to you. There are moments that you need to grieve. There are moments you need to savor. There are moments you need to pause and consider. Something in you, something in your soul is telling you to wait before moving on to the next thing. When that happens, be patient with yourself. Give yourself time in those times and be patient with others when they feel that need too. Another simple suggestion, build transition time from your work life, school life to your personal life. If you're working at your office or, or business right now, use your drive home time as transition time to reflect on your day, to process what happened to you that day, or do it when you get home. My friend, Pastor Rick Warren, says that he stops outside his front door when he gets home in the evening. He stops and takes a great big breath before going inside his house because he knows he wants to leave the questions and concerns and cares of his church at church so he can be totally available to his wife and kids. That pause, that deep breath, simple as it is, works for him. And if you're working from home or homeschooling, it might be even more important to have that kind of moment of transition, that boundary, that border. Take a deep breath before you move from your home office to the kitchen or family room for the evening. Or as you close your laptop, say a quick prayer to bring the work day, the school day, to a close, to punctuate, to punctuate it, letting the cares of the day close with them. Rituals, these are rituals that can help you transition from work time and school time to family time, to personal time, to downtime. And then be good to yourself. I'm all in favor of rewarding yourself, especially at the end of the day. A good book, an old movie, family dinner, family game night, plan it in advance. Look forward to it. Work toward it. You know, when I was, when we were traveling a lot before COVID, I learned about myself that I don't like traveling at night. I learned that it was unkind to myself, to my soul, to work all day and then rush to the airport, jump on a plane, get home late, and find myself weary and unproductive the next day, not to mention grumpy. Instead, we developed the custom of staying an extra night, staying an extra night wherever we went. Go out to dinner someplace nice, maybe experience something of the locale we were in or just crash at the hotel and then fly back home early the next day. Think about the end of the work day or the school day. What does that look like for you? And can you be deliberate about it? And not only the end of the work day, but also the end of the work week. There should be a special time, a sacred time, a day, or as much of a day as you can carve out, a day away from the usual, a day that's different. This is your Sabbath. And it's not just about checking the church box. I'm not talking about that. It's about honoring God and respecting yourself by regrouping and regrounding yourself weekly, being mindful of yourself, of those around you, and of God. And then, of course, there's your annual break. We're entering the vacation season this time of year, and probably more people are looking forward to it than ever before this year. So why not make it more special this year? When you go, don't rush it, don't overschedule it, don't include a lot of things or people who really aren't relaxing for you. Think it through and plan ahead. Include transition in your vacation time too, before and after the vacation. You could sum it all up very simply in this way. Divert daily 
that's your quiet time. Reset regularly, that's your pause for prayer. Withdraw weekly, that's your Sabbath, and abandon annually, that's your vacation. And I think that's pretty clever, too. <laughs> Today is the Feast of Corpus Christi, and the gospel scene that we've read takes us back to Holy Thursday, to the Last Supper. And we hear the words that we hear every time we come to Mass. He took bread, said the blessing, broke it, gave it to them, saying, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks, and gave it to them. This is the blood of the covenant. We remember that Jesus Christ instituted the Eucharist on the night before he died, making a covenant, a new covenant with us. This covenant is the promise that God will be with us, and he is with us. He's present with us here in the Eucharist. He is present, and his presence is real. Of course, we know the world is changing rapidly and accelerated by COVID, the way people experience and interact with church is forever changed too. No doubt about it. It is an unbelievable blessing and an incredible honor to broadcast Mass online. And we will, of course, continue to invest in our online campus. We very much value our online congregation. And we've heard hundreds and hundreds of stories of people growing in faith and fellowship ever since we launched our online campus, which has done nothing but explode in growth in the past year. Nativity Online can powerfully and effectively change hearts, shape believers, and reach the unchurched. And to those of you joining us online today, please, please know this. Christ is truly present to you in your online worship. He is present in God's Word, and just as He promised, He is always present whenever even two or three gather in His name, even online. We love you, and we are thrilled that you are joining us in this way today. At the same time, we know that coming to church and receiving Holy Communion is an unparalleled opportunity and honor because we're receiving Christ, the body of Christ. And it is so appropriate on this of all feast days, the feast of the body of Christ, that the body, you, the body of Christ, should again, finally and at last, be gathering together here in our sanctuary. Ultimately, the kind of transitions we've been talking about are spiritual transitions, spiritual renewal. When spiritual renewal happens in your life, remember that it's not about, it's never about religion or ritual, rules and regulation, legalism or law. It's not about obedience or obligation. It's about coming to meet, getting to know, and getting to grow in the real presence of a real person. 